Our next uh, speaker is Professor Aharon Barak. Uh, professor Barak is a professor of law at the Inter Interdisciplinary Center in Herzliya. He is much known to us here in Israel for his presidency of the Supreme Court of Israel. Prior to this uh, office, uh, Professor Barak served as justice on the Supreme Court of Israel, as the Attorney General of Israel, and as the Dean of the Law, of the, uh, law Faculty of the Hebrew University uh, of Jerusalem. Um, I think I'm, I skipped the uh, Attorney General of Israel, or of course, <laughs> yeah. Um, Professor uh, Barak's personality and activity have been, uh, uh, um, have been most influential in all branches of law of the Israeli system. He was also most influential in formulated the, the Supreme Court's interpretation of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. And this afternoon, Professor Barak is going to speak on a Jewish and democratic state and its relevance to the Arab minority in Israel. It's a great pleasure for me and honor to be able to talk with you in this event. And I'm so happy, Harry, that that's in, in your honor. You heard a lot about different positions he has taken in the English judiciary, but I'm not sure that you heard what he has done in every one of these positions. And we need a Harry Wolf here in Israel. Uh, if you could achieve here only part of what you have achieved in England, in the UK, it would be a great progress for our society, both in terms of your reform of the civil procedure of civil action, civil justice system, and also, and for me most important, in your ability to create a new relationship between the judiciary and the legislature and the executive branch generally, and the appointment of judges specifically. We are, in Israel now, are, are under attack uh, on some of those items. You were able to convince the politicians that the appointment of judges in England, in the UK, in reality is done by non-political bodies. The minister has some discretion, but a very limited one. Really, the, the choosing of the judges, all instances, is done by a committee that has judges, lawyers, laymen, but not politicians. We had another system which I had talked with you a lot about it when you were working on your uh, reform. Here in Israel, just the other week ago, another proposal was made to uh, enlarge the presence of the politicians and to diminish the presence of the judiciary. So we need you, Harry. I don't know why you are leaving now. You should stay here a little more. Talk with our politicians and let them know what a country like the UK, which is a rule of law country, you, you are absolutely right, how you were able to have a first class judiciary uh, without the presence within, within the appointment process of the politicians. Here it's a very ongoing battle day to day and who knows what will happen here. All right, so my topic is the values of the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state generally and the application of this idea to uh, minorities here in Israel. My starting point is, of course, the uh, basic law, dignity and liberty, which is uh, considered to be, within the Israeli legal system, our constitution. It's a very limited constitution, it's a very fragile constitution, and it's not the best constitution I have many things to say about it. But still, it is of a constitutional power in the sense that a statute that limits one of those rights uh, 
may be unconstitutional, and every court in the country can decide that it's void, not just non-compatible. So in this respect, it, it's a stronger, uh, has a stronger force than the Human Rights Act. And when the basic law of the dignity and liberty, human dignity and liberty was enacted, or constituted, as I prefer to say, it has put in it language which we didn't know in before, new language. And this new language is referring to, I cite, the values of the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. This expression is not mentioned in our Declaration of Independence, neither the values of Israel as a Jewish state. In fact, our Declaration of Independence even doesn't cite, doesn't refer to the values of Israel as a democratic state. So the, this expression uh, is new with us, and it appears in our two basic laws, both in human dignity and liberty and freedom of profession. And it says, the purpose of this basic law is to protect human dignity and liberty in order to establish in a basic law the values of the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. That's the constitutional language. And it seems to me that this expression has two relevances or is important in two areas. First, it determines a general purpose, purpose that is beneath those two basic laws to protect human dignity and liberty and the freedom of profession in order to establish in a basic law the values of the state of Israel as the Jewish and democratic states. These values are therefore an important interpretive criteria in determining what extent the provisions of the basic law and to what extent the provisions of the basic law apply. For example, if the basic law says that it is protecting property or privacy, we do say that it was intended to protect them in order to protect human dignity and liberty, in order to establish in a basic law the values of the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. I must say it's a strange, it is a very strange formulation, and uh, it, which was not discussed neither in the committee, nor in the Israeli public, nor in the Israeli literature. But just for you, Harry, I, isn't it strange that the purpose of the basic law is to protect human dignity, not because of human dignity, and other rights, liberty, not because they are important rights, but in order to establish in a basic law the values of the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state. Hasn't it mixed up the orders? That's my view, but I want to leave this whole alive <laughs> so let me uh, just continue. So the idea of Jewish and democratic, the values of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state has a very important role in interpreting every right which is in the basic law, every idea that comes from those basic law, laws, and generally I think also these, the whole Israeli legal system because you cannot create a disharmony between those basic laws and the other uh, laws of the Israeli society. So here it is the interpretive idea. But there is a second importance for the expression, the values of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state, which, is, which goes above and outside the influence of in interpretation. The values of the state of Israel are not merely criteria for interpreting our human rights, but they are also a criteria for limiting our human rights. Harry, in his talk to you, uh, mentioned the idea that most human rights are not absolute, but are relative. They may be limited. And the limitation, and we have a special provision in, in our basic law, uh, that allows this kind of limitation. And he, I'll read to you what this section which is called the limitation clause, says the rights under this basic law may only be affected by a law that befits the values of the state of Israel. Which values of the state of Israel? Jewish and democratic. 
is intended for a proper purpose and to an extent that is not excessive or in a certain extent which is not excessive, which is the proportionality that you referred to. So you see, with if a statute affects a constitutional right in a way that doesn't fit the values of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state, then even if it fulfills all other requirements for proportionality, it will not be constitutional. So those two values, democracy and Jew Jewish and democracy, are of major importance. And the question, of course, is what do they mean? What is the content of Jewish and democratic state? Let me tell you, as I mentioned earlier, they don't appear in our literature before, neither in the Declaration of Independence, not in any other statute. Suddenly, they were put into our Bill of Rights in this basic law. And we went to, to our chambers after March 1992, myself, Dorit, and others. And suddenly, we discovered that we are ruled by a very interesting idea, the values of the State of Israel is a Jewish and democratic state. And we ask ourselves, what is it all about? <coughs> well, the values of Israel as a democratic state is easy. UK, what Harry told us about UK is right also with us. So we know what it means, the values of Israel as a democratic state. Well, it means the rule of the majority, it means separation of powers, it means the, rules, the rule of law, it means independence of the judiciary, and human rights, fine. But what are the values of Israel as a Jewish state? Who knows it? I haven't studied about it anything. And when I asked my colleagues, the expert on Jewish law, they also didn't know anything about it. It's not a, a, an expression which is uh, easy to understand even within the Jewish law tradition itself. But while, you know, a law professor may say, okay, it's a difficult question, let's think about it. And uh, I can't say so. I have to give judgment tomorrow. So I had to apply it and to try to think about it even before there was any academic uh, preparation for any thought about that. Well, we usually start with the Declaration of Independence. So the Declaration of Independence says, in Israel arose a Jewish people, there their, their, their spiritual, religious, and political character was formed, there they were lived as a state, there they created a cultural asset for the nation and for all humanity and bequested the eternal book of books to the whole world. So you can start from here to try to see what does it mean for Israel to be to have Jewish values. And from here we started and we said the state of Israel is a Jewish state or means that it is the state of the Jewish people. The natural rights of the Jewish people is to be independent in their own sovereign state. This is the state in which every Jew has the right to move in and to become a citizen of. A Jewish state is a state whose history is integrated and intertwined with the history of the Jewish people, whose main language is Hebrew, and whose holidays reflect Jewish heritage. A Jewish state is a state that perpetuates the memory of Jews massacred in the Holocaust, and that was designed to be the solution to the Jewish problem resulting from the lack of both homeland and independence by renewing the Jewish state in the land of Israel. This comes from our Declaration of Independence. A Jewish state is a state which cultivates Jewish culture and Jewish education. A Jewish state is, is the realization of the aspiration of generations for the redemption of Israel as a state in which the values of freedom, justice, and equity, and peace of Israel heritage are its values. A Jewish state is a state whose values are also drawn from the religious traditions. 
a tradition in which the Bible is the most basic book and the foundation of its ethics. A Jewish state is a state in which the values of the Torah, halacha, are among its values. Well, you see, it's quite a wide interpretation. This interpretation leads to the conclusion, at least this was my view, that the values of the state of Israel have two primary aspects. The first is a Zionist aspect. The second is a heritage aspect. The Zionist aspect is expressed, for example, in the right of every Jew to move to Israel and become an Israeli citizen, a right guaranteed by the law of return, which is not part of the Bill of Rights. Jewish heritage is expressed, for example, in the law that says that whenever something is lacking in our legislation, then it has to be filled by the principles of freedom, justice, equity, and peace of the Israeli heritage. This replaced the common law in Article 46 that you know. Indeed, it would be a one-dimensional vision if we were to only equate the values of the state of Israel as a Jewish state in the heritage aspect because we have also Zionism. So Zionism, on the other hand, stamped their seal on Jewish character of the state of Israel. It may be pointed out that there is a tight connection between Zionist aspect and heritage aspect. There is also a connection between those two and democratic state. So what is the heritage aspect? What are the Jewish values of the state of Israel from the heritage perspective? We learn about these values from Jewish sources. They include the values of the state of Israel as a Jewish state in various levels of abstraction. From specific laws on certain issues to an abstract value, such as love your neighbor as yourself, or do that which is honest and good. Halakha contains particular and universal values. It contains values developed over generations through the history of the Jewish people. There are values which complemented each other and there are values which contradict each other. What about the Zionist aspect? From the Zionist perspective, the state of Israel is a national home for the Jewish people, exemplified by the law of return, which enables every Jew in the world to call Israel his home. Zionism sees the state of Israel as, a, as prompting the revival of the Hebrew language and development of Hebrew culture. Israel a democratic state, I have already talked about it. It's much clearer and I will skip it. The main question, of course, is, and I think you are waiting for me to say something about it, and not just to say it's a, it's a a difficult question, is the following. Well, there exists a tension and there are contradictions between the values of Israel as a Jewish state and the values of Israel as a democratic state. There's also a contradiction between the values of Israel as a Jewish state from the heritage point of view and from the Zionist point of view. How do you solve this contradiction? Well, my starting point is that an, appropriate, that an appropriate analysis does not have to intensify those contradictions. The role of judges is not to create contradictions, but to solve them. So a purposive analysis based on constitutional unity and normative harmony aspires to find that which is unifying and common while preventing contradictions and reducing point of friction. We must strive to find the common denominator and synthesis between the values of Israel as a Jewish state and the values of Israel as a democratic state. Indeed, we must search for an integration between the different values of the state of Israel in an attempt to create homogeneous and inclusive perspective. One, however, does not have to come to the expense of the other. Through mutual concessions, it is possible to find a proper balance. Thus, for example, if with the word of Allah there is a stream of particularism and a stream of universalism, it would be appropriate for the interpreter to adopt the stream of universalism 
and to put aside this stream of particularism. Since this stream, the universalism, is more easily integrated with the values of Israel as a democratic state. <coughs> Similarly, if from perspective of democracy, there are various ways of viewing in interpersonal relationships, it, it is appropriate to choose that approach that is similar to the values of Israel as a Jewish state. And let me just give you an example on the second point. State and church. In French, in France, and in the US, there is a wall bef between the state and the church. The state cannot support church. In England, on the other hand, your queen is the head of the church. So you have different views about it. Therefore, I do think that in an attempt to find a compromise, harmony in these areas, I would not support a separation of state and church if it, do, if it does not fit Jewish values. I would support the support of the state to the church, but on one condition, on the basis of equality. You give money to the Jewish, give money to all the others. But if you operate on equality basis, I think a this kind of compromise can be made. Not in America or France. There any support is unconstitutional. In Israel, an equal support to all of them will be, I think, will fit the values of the, of the Israel as human, as a Jewish and, and democratic state. So judges must provide a solution that is consistent with our constitutional history, as well as consensus of Israeli society. And they must provide a solution that connects with the past and creates a basis for development of the future. All this imposes, of course, a heavy burden on the judiciary. But we are used to it. I think we have done it not badly in the past, and I'm sure we will do it in the future. So that's the basis. What about equality? Because I want to come to our topic. One of the significant aspects of the values of Israel as a democratic state is the value of equality. Take equality out of democracy and nothing is left from democracy. This is the Rechta, this is the rule of law. This was expressed in the Declaration of Independence, ours, when it says that the state of Israel will establish equal social and political rights for all its citizens without distinguishing on the basis of religion, race, or gender. End of quotation. Indeed, the state must honor each individual basic right to equality. All rights upon which democracy is based are built on equality. What about the values of the state of Israel? Do the values of Israel as a Jewish state detract from the principle of equality? Does it mean that as we are talking about the values of Israel as a Jewish state, that we, sh we are allowed to discriminate between Jews and non-Jews? The answer is negative. The Jewish, values of the Jewish values of the state of Israel are also the values that support the principle of equality. From the heritage aspects of the state of Israel, equality is a basic values. It is expressed in the imperative, you shall have only one law, the stranger shall be as a citizen. Justice Elon, who was a great expert in this area, once wrote in a judgment, the very foundation in the religious world is the idea that every person is created in the image of God, B'Tselem Elohim, Imagi Dei. Thus begins the Jewish Bible, and from it Jewish law derives the basic principle with regard to the value of human being, each person as he is, his equality and his love. End of citation. This idea is also part of Zionist aspect of the state of Israel. Israel is a Jewish state because the Jewish, pe Jewish people congregated there and it is the solution to their problems. Every Jew has a right to move to Israel and to become a citizen. This does not offend and should not offend the essence of equality. Thus, when the purpose underlying the foundation of the state is that it serves as the homeland of all Jews in the world, the right of every Jew to move to Israel does not, in my view, constitute discrimination against those who are not Jewish. However, 
the moment you entered into Israel, equality should prevail. I wrote in one of my, my judgment that a Jew was giving a special key, a golden key, to enter into this home of ours, Israel. But the moment you use the key and you enter, or oh, you were born here, at that moment, all of us are equal, Jews and no Jews. This, for me, is the values of Israel as democracy. This, for me, means also the values of Israel as a Jewish state. Zionism, Zionism was born to negate racism. It learned, it learned the extent to which racist treatment dictated by religious or national belonging can de degrade human character. Thus, Zionism is opposed to any pattern of discrimination on the basis of religion or nationality. Zionism came to establish Jewish state and it, is, and it succeeded. There is no doubt that Israel is a Jewish state according to its heritage, symbols, holidays, language, etc. Like other nation states, Israel acknowledged that it is, must treat every person in its midst equally, even if he is part of a non-Jewish minority. What about equality without regard to religion, race, or gender? I will be talking about religion, of course. Equality extends across all aspects of life within the state. Therefore, there must be equality between members of different nations, commun communities, races, parties, genders, ages, viewpoints, and bodies. It should be noted that the list, this list is not exhaustive. I will focus on one aspect, equality between Jews and Arabs. This issue is discussed in the Declaration of Independence, which states that the State of Israel will uphold equality between its citizens without regard for religion, nationality, or gender. Hence, every citizen without regard for religion or nationality is entitled to equality. With this background, we can also understand the decision of the Supreme Court according to which the state must treat Jews and Arabs equally in the allocation of state funds. This is an elementary demand of equality. An Arab seeking to acquire an apartment in, the upper Nazareth, in Upper Nazareth from the state has the right to the same terms and condition that the state offers to Jews. There is nothing special about this apartment that justifies differential treatment for Jews and Arabs. Zionism does not support any discrimination between Jews and Arabs, and this is reflected in Israel's Declaration of Independence, which states that all members of, Arab of the Arab people who are resident in Israel, in the state of Israel, must maintain the peace and play their part in construction of the state on the basis of full and equal citizenship. Declaration of Independence. This is also how Zionism was viewed by founding fathers, Herzl, Jabotinsky, Ben-Gurion, and others, who stressed time and again that the state of the Jews is a state in which full equality between Jews and Arabs will prevail. This is also how Zionism was viewed by the Supreme Court. From its very beginning, the court stressed the equality between Israeli citizens on the basis of religion, nationality, gender. Therefore, the court's decisions that the allocation of state lands to Jews and Arabs must be done on the basis of equality is neither an anti-Zionist nor a post-Zionist decision. It is a Zionist decision in the full sense of the world. The decision represents the fulfillment of Zionism, which views Israel as a national home for the Jews inside whose walls equality prevail among all its residents. Thus, only in a national home built on principles of equality can the dignity of men stand the test of time. <coughs> only a state that treats all its members equally can be accepted into the family of nation supporting freedom. Only a society based on the foundation of equality can live in peace with itself. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Barak, for 
giving us your interpretation for um, Israel as a Jewish state and a democratic state, and also pointing at the contradictions embedded in this formula, and for suggesting solutions to tackle this complexion. 